Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Bob Rabaki and I'm a consultant with Pragmatic Works. And today I want to talk about a feature of Power BI called Dataflow and how we can use that to turn Power BI into a uh, ETL tool. So to start, I want to point out that this is a preview feature in Power BI as I'm recording this. And backing up in Power BI, uh, when we first started with Power BI, we used Power Query to query our data sources, perform translations and transformations on that data, and create some data sets. Uh, and those data sets were available only to that Power BI report, so they weren't very reusable. Power BI then introduced the capability to share data sets uh, to other Power BI reports. So if I've created a data set with a lot of transformations and I publish that, other Power BI users can build reports on that data set. So it introduced that reusability. But with Dataflow, what we can do now is create data sets using Power BI that are accessible to a number of tools, uh, including Power BI. Uh, so things like uh, Databricks, for example, uh, we can connect to a, a Dataflow or a data flow, excuse me. So what does this all have to do with ETL? Uh, I want to show you this screenshot here. This is just a simple diagram of two um, uh, data flows. So the one on the top is kind of our, our typical uh, pattern that we use today where we would use SSIS for pulling data out of a source system, perform some transformations, and maybe load it into a data mart and a, and a relational database schema. With Power BI data flow, we're using Power Query just like we do today with, with Power BI. We've got all the, the same tools and transformations and everything. But the output of that now is not a Power BI data set, but rather um, files that are actually stored in Azure Data Lake uh, Gen 2. And so with that data actually stored in uh, Data Lake, we can use other tools to consume that data. So we're not limited to just Power BI. So we can do things like point Databricks to it, or maybe um, you know Azure Machine Learning, we can use that, that data as a source for a machine learning model, for example. So this, the data flows are available, or you create them, I'm sorry, through the Power BI service. And so this next screenshot shows you quickly how to do that. Uh, so if you go out to your uh, workspace, uh, you'll see uh, the, the data flows in a preview, uh, or marked as a preview. And so if I select that I want to look at my data flows, um, I can see what data flows I have, uh, but then I can create them uh, up in the upper right there by clicking the Create button and, and um, choosing Data Flow. And that's going to open up an editor uh, in your web browser uh, using Power Query, so you'll connect to your data sources. You can perform all the same transformations that you can today with the Power BI desktop, but it's all done through, um, through your browser. So after you've created your data flow, uh, the definition of it, you'll refresh that the, the the data in that flow, kind of like you do with your uh, in Power BI Desktop, and that'll populate your data flow with data. And after you do that, your data flow is now actually accessible um, as a data source for Power BI or other tools. And so this next screenshot here, I just want to show you um, a recent um, grab from, from Power BI uh, in that the Power BI data flows are available as a, as a data set um, in Power BI. So you can use Power BI to connect to data flows, but you, as I mentioned before, the data is actually stored uh, in Data Lake, so you can use other um, services to, to, to connect to that data as well. So this is a quick introduction to um, Power BI data flow and, and how we can treat data flow as an ETL tool. I hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions about Power BI, uh, using Power BI data flows or uh, anything else with the Azure data platform, please reach out to us. Let us know. Thank you.